Hello, hello, everyone. Tyranny here. Um, if you saw the title, you know this is my top five favorite games of 2011. But first of all, I want to use this moment to promote my end of the year special, which is actually going to be a bit of an ongoing series. You see, I'm having a competition with uh, one of my subscribers and friends, uh, Mega Charizard fan. We're both going to be doing a Newslock run and Pokemon Snakewood at the same time, and we're having a competition basically. Whoever gets the farthest without losing wins. Uh, now, I posted all the rules in the descriptions. There's quite a few. I mean, it's not. Uh, I didn't want to make it too hard, but I didn't want to make it too easy when I made up when I made the rule set. So um, yeah, it's going to be uploaded every Wednesday, with the first episode being uploaded this Wednesday. So uh, keep a lookout for that, people. Now, um, as for my top five games of 2011, let's do honorable mentions first. Uh, my, the first honorable mention I have for uh, top five games of 2011 would be The Witcher 2. I don't know uh, if a lot of you have played that game or played the first one, but uh, I, I heard about The Witcher and I played the first one this year and I thought it was amazing for, um, for you know, the year it came out. It didn't come out that long ago, but for when it came out it was okay. It had Good graphics, good story. I really like the story, by the way. The story was fantastic. Good graphics, good story. Uh, the fighting was fun. I was pretty addicted to that game when I played it, but the sequel, man, the sequel bumped it up. I mean, graphics and story are just amazing. The, the graphics, um, I was surprised my computer could handle it, even though it's it's uh, pretty buff. I, I hyped it up quite a bit, but uh, the graphics are amazing. The story was great. Uh, and the gameplay was great. Of course, you know, you probably won't want to play it if you're under 18, because there is a lot of, uh, nudity and stuff like that in a game like this. It's, it's pretty hardcore, guys, and there's a lot of blood and nudity and sex and all that other fun stuff, so, um, take caution when playing The Witcher 2. The reason it didn't make my list, though, is because, uh, admittedly, I liked the ending of the first one, but this ending of the second one really sucked. Um... For such a great game overall, the ending was terrible. You'll just have to look it up online if you don't know what it is already. But basically, it doesn't answer very many of your questions, if, if any at all. Now, for my second honorable mention, the Monkey Island Special C Collection Edition. Basically, what happened was, uh, if any of you have played the original Monkey Island, it's a 1990 floppy disk game. It's really epic. It's like a point-and-click uh, pirate game. It's really funny. Uh, zany, addicting. I love the Monkey Island series. I mean, they had about, I think there were about five or six games in the series that came out uh, originally. But what uh, LucasArts did was they remade the they remade the first one with better graphics, gameplay, etc. And that was great. It was very nostalgic. I loved it, and I loved the originals. It really got me into the series, actually. And uh, they also added some new episodes on there, which is basically. Um, I want to say it's probably the de definitive of GameCube graphics. I mean, the, the graphics don't really turn you off to the whole game because it's still Monkey Island. It's, uh, you know, it's zany, it's comical, uh, the storyline's entertaining, uh, the puzzles are fairly difficult, actually. I mean, to get all the puzzles done the first time is, well, you're, you're good. <laughs> That's all I gotta say, but uh, the new series, the Monkey Island Collective Edition, is great. And they also, uh, the, the uh, people that uh, came out with this, they're called Telltale Games, and they've come out with a few things that are pretty cool. Like, they've come out with a Back to the Future game with uh, around the same graphics. I haven't played it yet. I mean, I plan on doing it eventually. I'm sure it's only 10 bucks, like the uh, new Monkey Island games are, but they're great for that price. I mean, if you can get around the graphics, they're, they're pretty fantastic. Now, for my actual top five list. Number five, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that was, whoo, that was such a great game. Um, the best fighting game, in my opinion, to come out this year, probably in a long time even. The graphics are fantastic. They kept the 2D fighting style they had in the other Mortal Kombat games. Heck, I mean, you wouldn't expect a good storyline from a fighting game, but the storyline in this game was absolutely fantastic. The voice acting was good. The story was good. All the way up until the end, it was just, wow, Mortal Kombat was amazing, guys. Uh, and the only reason it's only number five on my list and not higher is because of the amount of games that came out this year that were just fantastic that it couldn't compete with. I mean, I like Mortal Kombat and I think it's amazing, but there are games that came out this year that, that just blow it away in terms of content and everything. 
Uh, and of course, I have to mention that, of course, Freddy Krueger came out as DLC on Mortal Kombat, and that would have automatically put it in the top five for me anyways, because that is just freaking awesome. Freddy Krueger in a video game. I did call that months before they released it, though, and that made me feel a bit smart. Anyways, number four, Dead Space 2. I don't see this on a lot of people's top games list of the year, mainly because I'm sure it came out, it came out in January, and that was a long time ago. But I remember playing Dead Space 1 and being incredibly impressed with it. It's my, one, of my, one of my favorite uh, horror games of all time. I mean, it's gory, it's scary, it keeps you tense, and it screws with your mind all at the same time. Um, Dead Space 2 was such an upgrade, though. It was fantastic. Um, even the, the ending was great. I mean, because they totally trolled the ending of the first one. I'm not going to give it away. You have to play it. But they totally trolled the ending of the first one, and that was so funny. I, lo- I, I just geeked out when I saw that. That was amazing. But yes, graphics, gameplay, story. Oh, let me tell you one of the moments in this game. I mean, it's not a spoiler or anything, but something that happened to me. I was walking through, uh, I was walking through an empty room, you know, I'm thinking, oh, this is a big room. There's going to be aliens attacking me here or whatever. So, you know, I'm kind of slowly slinked in there with my gun ready, waiting for all these aliens to come out, and uh, nothing happens, you know? So I'm like, huh, well, maybe I'll just run to the door then. So I run to the door, look behind me one more time, no aliens, you know, I'm like, whatever. As soon as I touch the door, the freaking thing explodes in my face, and then the aliens come out. That screwed with my mind. I mean, and then there's this part where you go through, like, a freezer place, and, uh, all the aliens in the pods in the freezer are, like, twitching, and you don't know who's gonna come out and attack you and who's not, but it's a very, very bone-chilling experience. Dead Space 2, though, is fantastic. I'd recommend it to any horror game lover. Uh, except if you're squeamish, because they got some pretty messed up stuff in there in terms of gore. You'll have to find that out for yourself. Now, number three, Batman Arkham City. Now, this is a game I got recently, actually, uh, a couple weeks ago, but I couldn't put it down until I finished it. The uh, just overall epicness of it is, wow. I mean, I couldn't put down the first one either, but the second one, there's open world. uh, There's a plethora of Batman villains to fight. It's very nostalgic, especially for Batman fans. Um, the story's fantastic, especially the ending. Uh, I rarely see endings as good as that one. I mean, there's not really, like... I, I don't know why people keep saying there was, like, a twist at the end. That's what I keep hearing. There wasn't really a twist. But the ending is oh, such... Uh, great, man. It's it's so great. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but... The ending's great. The gameplay is great. The combat is fluid and fun. I even love the stealth, even though I suck at it. It's... Wow. Arkham City is a masterpiece, guys, and if they ever come out with another another game in the Batman series, I, I, I it's going to be Game of the Year material for sure. I mean, this one was too, but it, it lost out to something more epic. <laughs> um, yeah, so number two, Portal 2. Those of you that remember Portal 1, I'm sure a lot of you, since you're on the internet and everything, have seen Portal references all over the place. Portal 1, fantastic. Uh, puzzle is good. Not much of a storyline, except that you're chowing, you're trying to escape, basically. Uh, But Portal 2 uh, basically made up for the moments in Portal 1, what was missing from Portal 1, basically, in terms of story. I mean, you brought in co-op mode, which is awesome, by the way. Uh, I mean, it's enough to... You've got to be a genius to put a game like this together. I mean, it's enough to make hard puzzles for people to figure out with just one, one player, but they actually made a separate campaign for two, which is amazing. And I mean... Ricky Gervais, I think, plays Wheatley, and um, that's great voice acting. I I love that. I love that character. Wheatley is amazing. Um, The puzzles are hard, and granted, a lot harder than the first one, in my opinion. The storyline is so much better. There's so much of a story. I mean, you give Chell a backstory, a little bit of a backstory. You give GLaDOS a huge backstory. I mean, you find out who GLaDOS is, for God's sakes. And, um... Yeah, Wheatley, of course, adding in the extra characters like Wheatley and everything, that's... Man. Valve, you guys are geniuses. That's all I gotta say about that, man. That's Portal 2 is amazing. It's a must-play for anybody. Uh, Play the first one first, though. You will not regret it. It was free on Steam a while ago. I don't know if it still is. Anyway, my number one game of 2011, as you may have already guessed, was Skyrim. Naturally. How do I even go into this without saying things that other people have already said? Um, graphics. There's so much detail put into this game. Oh my god, it's so expansive. You'll waste a hundred hours of your life just looking at freaking ants on plants. Not even kidding. Um, 
Oh, and the, the world is so expansive. There's always stuff to do. You go on quests, and then you find yourself going on about three more different quests at the same time. I finished two quests at once at one point, just going on a quest that I didn't even think was related to those two quests. It's weird. It's so... Ah, there's so much to do, and the amount of uh, content is amazing. I mean, it's it's... I don't know how long I've been working on this game, but... If every game had this much effort put into it, then my god, I don't think anybody would go outside. <laughs> it's... wow. Play Skyrim if you haven't. I don't even care if you play in none of the other Elder Scrolls games. We haven't even heard of Elder Scrolls. Play Skyrim. You will not regret it. I mean, there's freaking dragons, for God's sakes. I've probably wasted way too much of my life on that already. God. So, yeah. Um... Thanks for watching my top five games of 2011, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, keep a lookout for that news log challenge because that is going to be fantastic, providing it doesn't only last for like two episodes. <laughs> ah, all right, this is Tierney here. Rate, comment, subscribe, favorite. See you guys next time.